early in the a.m. and I'm trying to be quiet for my neighbors, but today I'm going to talk to you guys about is keto bad for you? So here we go. Is it bad for you? Well, let's go into the pros and cons of trying the ketogenic diet, right? Is it good? Is it bad? Does it help you? Do, we, do you lose weight? Does it cure cancer? Uh, diabetes? And on and on and on and on and on. So let's try to figure it out. Okay. I always say to people that email me all day long, keto is amazing for every autoimmune disorder if it's done correctly. And, I mean, I get that question so much, I don't know the individual's issue, right? So I'm like, well, I can't tell you if it's good or bad because I don't know if you have any, I don't know if you have a gallbladder, I don't, I don't know if you don't have a gallbladder, I don't know if you go to bed at 4 a.m., have a shift job, it goes on and on and on. If you've been dieting your whole life. So let's get right on to it. Is keto good? Is it bad? What are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? What are the drawbacks? So, well, maybe it's not something to smile about, but I'm not really worried because it's all freaking amazeballs. Okay. Keto is amazing if you learn how to become highly keto adapted. Now on the internet, people keep touting that they're in ketosis, but they're not. And they're like, I've got that energy. Mm, the energy, you can get this like flood of your body using ketones, and then a lot of people, they stop being able to convert these ketones into beta hydroxybutyrate for the brain because they're not able to keep their body more in homeostasis, like in a balance. So you have to get yourself there. It takes a lot of work. It's not going to happen in a week or 10 days, as people are saying, to get into a state of ketosis. This is an ongoing process that can go from one level or stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. And the longer you remain strict on your keto lifestyle and remain highly keto adapted, the better you become. The more efficient at using ketones you become over time. So let's get that clear athletes and a lot of people who are trying to do this for weight loss or or to fix their thyroid this is a process and it takes a hell of a lot of work and it's not easy and that's what I love about it because for those who are looking for quick fi fixes get out of here this isn't the lifestyle the non BS lifestyle you're gonna exist in it's just you're not okay so let's get more right on to People with thyroid issues. Hyperthyroidism, overactive thyroid, or hypothyroidism, underactive thyroid, where uh, they're not getting enough thyroid hormone T3 into the cells to then give you energy, 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 energy. Yes. For those who are concerned, you might want to do a full thyroid panel where they can test your free T3 and your TPO antibodies and your T4 as well. But here we go. A lot of you guys get the standard TSH test, the thyroid stimulating hormone, that even the full thyroid panel may be subjective because we don't know what's going on in the cells. Doctors can only see so much. So a lot of people that are losing their hair before keto, during keto, after keto, most likely it's a thyroid condition. And this has been brewing in the pot for years, right? Just like cancer. It's brewing, it's brewing, it's brewing. The cup is getting filled up and then boom, one drop over and screw. You try keto, think about it. You try the ketogenic diet, which everybody says is so amazeballs. And I don't mean big, heavy, sweaty elephant balls. I mean baseballs. Yes, you try it and you have all these issues. 
And uh, the more damaged you are, the more likely you are to have issues when you try this lifestyle. It's not actually being in a state of ketosis that destroys and ravages your thyroid even more. It's the fact that you're not disciplined in your ability to learn and do whatever you need to do to keep that thyroid nice and happy as you're trying to keto diet. So how would you keep the thyroid happy? Well, simple stuff. Sleep, 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 da-da-da, da-da-da, sleep. Sleep, that's number one, because that's when your body heals. And all y'all think that you sleep so well, you're not. Because you gotta get down deep into sleep, like you're diving down into a swimming pool. Then you bob back up, and then you dive back down. And you come back up all during the night, right? One, two, three, four, fifth level REM, sleep, repair, 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 repair. First half of sleep, your body repairs. Second half of sleep, your mind repairs. And it's according to the circadian rhythm. So it's early in the morning, and I'm catching that first hour of light. That's very important because that's going to set, that's going to, my pineal gland is going to react to this. My adrenal glands are going to react, and I'm going to get my cortisol nice and up in the morning, and I feel fantastic. It's amazing to get your cortisol rhythm in the right order. So at night, I'm going to produce enough melatonin to put me in a rest state. But a lot of you guys have inverted cortisol, where your cortisol is too high at night, and even while sleeping. A lot of you guys actually, you can fall asleep, but then you have this interrupted sleep, or this restless, restless leg syndrome sleep, which most likely might be due to a mineral deficiency, and you might be malabsorptive, and your detoxification highways are blocked up. Yeah. So the, it's like there's multi-tiered, multi-level uh, onion where you've got to go and peel off each layer at, a layer at a time at fixing your issues. But something as simple as sleep will help your body repair. Get in, getting into a deep rested sleep, bobbing up and down all through the night so your body can repair and your mind can repair. That's number one. Number two, your personality. Your personality is stopping you from being able to adapt. For example, I spoke to a lovely, lovely woman yesterday. She was awesome. She was, she was, she was 58. Yes, uh, had been an athlete her whole life, um, but uh, had some health issues, right? Bloated all the time. Bloated all the time. Um, what else did she have? She was concerned about some thyroid symptoms. Yes. But the thing that made me concerned about her being bloated, yes, was her gut. Oh, and her adrenals. Stage three adrenal fatigue. Yes. And, she, and sleep. Her sleep sucks. Yes. And she was like, I've done everything. I've gone to my natural path, I've gone to my holistic this, and I've gone to my functional doctor, and you know, we've tried this supplement and that, blah, 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 and this medication, and I was like, hold up. And she was like, she, oh, she's amazing. One of the smartest women I've ever spoken to, but almost too smart for her own good. She had sent me some prehistory of herself, and it was just, I mean, tons almost too much information. Just the brain was chat chatter 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 chatter. Then I spoke with her. It wasn't like she was very like consciously aware. It wasn't like she was speaking and not aware of too much detail. Aware of it, but I could just tell it she was on. Like boom, on, boom, on and not off. Remember? Sympathetic, parasympathetic state. Parasympathetic state is when you're going to chill like this, right? You're going to be chilling. You're going to be kicking back in your armchair, chilling, and you're going to be observant, right? Sympathetic is, what'd you say? On, 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 yes, I'm listening, on. You don't even have to be hyper. You just be like, mm, mm hmm yeah, I know, I know, I know. That's on. See, that's on, 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 on. Yeah, turn that 
dial it down, yo. Keep your brain on. Chill the uh, nervous system down. Because you're on. I said, that's why you can't sleep at night. That's why you can't sleep. And you're looking for exterior remedies for sleep. And I said, you have to start thinking about sleep hours before you go to sleep. Not obsessively, but just the thought of getting into that relaxed zone. I said, no reading, because she's this voracious reader. I said, no reading at night, because that takes focus, like hunting for a lion, right? We're not trying to hunt for a lion at night. And she has nothing to protect her eyes from the blue light, which now her brain thinks it's uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon when it's uh, at night, nighttime, 9, 10 at night. I said, listen to an audiobook and get into a parasympathetic state and be like chilling, yeah, that's what we want. Hours before, because women get home and they get cranked up. No, you don't get cranked up, you wind down. So whatever spastic thing you need to do, <laughs> okay, let's speed it up, Steph. Do it in the, uh, do it in the earlier part of your evening. Don't work out at night. That's a big, huge no-no. Stop trying to lose weight by doing HIIT training, especially women. Men, if you're healthy, maybe. Women, uh-uh. Unless you're incredibly healthy, but most people who come to me are not. All right. What else? So that, that was a huge thing, her sleep. Sleep, 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 sleep. Women who are pregnant, yes, keto is amazing if you are pregnant. But what did you do prior to getting pregnant? What is your body like? What is your routine like? What, what is your sleep not like? What is your exercise like? Like, are you malabsorptive? If your detoxification pathways are blocked up, thyroid people are all the same. What are you prior? Do you have good gallbladder health? Do you have good gut flora? Are, are, uh, are, are you a calm person? So I was mentioning this woman before because her personality was cranked up. Cranked up personality. If you're cranked up and your adrenals are overloaded, loaded, you can't do these things. You can't do keto when you're pregnant because you're cranked up. You can't do keto if you have a thyroid condition because you're not willing to do whatever it takes. You're eating too much protein and way too much little fat. No. So these are a bit of some client stories. I had a guy 6'4". Now I had a guy 6'3 on 75 grams of protein a day, and no, I didn't stutter. Now I had a guy 6'4 at 80 grams of protein a day, getting into keto, not losing any muscle. But you have to eat enough fat, because a lot of you guys eat way too little fat. And you guys know that every time you do, your, gl your glucose starts to spike, because your brain's got to decide. Ketones, glucose. I'm addicted to glucose because I've been primed to use glucose my entire life. Now I'm going to switch to ketones. That's not going to happen right away, especially if you have a gut dysbiosis. And the woman that I spoke to, she had, gut, she had bloated gut. That's leaky gut. Leaky, leaky, leaky. And that creates autoimmune disorders and allergies to foods. So you got to heal the gut. There's a guy on my Facebook. These are kind of client stories, right, as well. Got on my Facebook, histamine intolerance, which is why, you guys, I, I'm the strict keto person. I've been called the strict keto Nazi, which is so stupid, but I digress. Um, I told you before, I don't care what you do, but if I'm going to coach people, I'm not going to sit and hold your hand. I'm going to be like, yo, this is what you got to do. Yes. Histamine intolerance. A lot of you guys can't handle almonds, eggs, avocado. You get a little <clears throat> dairy, most dairy, cheese. It has a serious dopamine-like effect. It's so, it has so much casein. It's so bad. And that you could have wounds that aren't healing, inflammation of the joint, and it could be the cheese. But you, you guys are looking to be bloated. You're like, I'm fine on cheese. I'm not bloated. Well, you're not bloated. But you most likely have something going on somewhere else. And you have to do a process of elimination to figure it out. Well, this guy, I mean, everything. We're talking citrus and cinnamon and spinach and, and meats and leftover meats because it has to be fresh killed to not have a histamine response. Overactive ma mast cells, yes. And he developed that because of his leaky gut. 
because all the crap he was eating when he was younger and not sleeping with the drain off the 